roof of a business after a series of Russian airstrikes in Lviv. The number of injured and killed in Ukraine continues to rise after a weekend bombing. And Kremlin forces setting their sights on overtaking the city of Mariupol, but Ukraine's leadership insists it will not be surrendered. Our D.C. Bureau Chief Ben Kennedy live in Washington now with much more. Ben. Calvin, a couple moments ago, the Biden administration said Russia has launched a campaign of terror and brutality, and it comes in the wake of more civilian deaths. Firefighters scrambled to put out flames in Lviv Monday after an attack in the city. <laughs> Left seven dead and at least 11 wounded. Same scenario in Kharkiv. It's their Russian shelling killed at least five people and more than a dozen hurt. These are clear indications. They are a clear testament to the campaign of brutality, the cam campaign of terror uh, that the Russians are waging against the people of Ukraine. And the strikes are intensifying as the Kremlin sites are on capturing Mariupol. City still is not fallen. There is still our uh, military forces, our soldiers. Some 2,500 Ukrainian troops are held up in a steel factory as supplies dwindle. It comes as the first wave of U.S. military aid arrives in the country, a part of an $800 million package that includes ammunition, drones, and helicopters to help Ukraine push back Russia. There is a plan now that we are beginning to execute, and we think that that training can happen in the next several days. So to give a bit of a recap, Kirby says U.S. forces will begin training Ukrainians on how to use these American weapons, weapons they might not have used before, like the howitzer, which is a long-range cannon. That is the latest here live in Washington, D.C. Ben Kennedy, Local 10 News. Okay, Ben, thanks a lot.